Biju, I am aware there are a lot of such initiatives uh, you are taking at Cognizant as well. In fact, uh, you know, when you started, you did speak about, uh, you know, operationalizing self-expression. Would you like to maybe elaborate that and talk about some of the initiatives you are taking? Sure. It's a really tough, tough time for people in their 20s and 30s when they shift to an environment that is very structured, very formal, people using corporate talk, <laughs> and it's not cool. Um, it's not as cool as social media. It's not as cool as going out with my friends, especially here in the Philippines. People love fun. Uh, and then you bring them to an environment where the walls are black and white. So one of the things that we wanted people to have was something that would make them connect with, with each other. Like in our case, we, we would have a Friday night uh, get together virtual. Okay. It's open for everybody to link to. We call it learn and earn, where people actually just shared what their personal projects are. So we would have a guest who would be volunteering, talking about their learning, uh, what their learnings are. And it's not even learning within the company. It could even be learning outside of the company. Uh, one person talked about how to intubate a person who is having a, a problem with breathing because he's a nurse. Another person, totally not, not related to the last conversation, talked about how to perform a musical number online. Uh, another person wanted to talk about uh, how to how to do how to make TikTok happen in the office. Uh, no. Like, can we have some TikTok stations around the company where it's TikTok safe? Um, so, how cool should the company get, <laughs> right? Uh, apparently, that's not something that corporate should discuss. That's something organic. That's something that's created from bottom up, mm. and that. That, that organic creation of it, we called it learn and earn. Uh, and that was something that impacted the, the offerings, the design and the delivery of what we're doing. We've also stopped thinking about having people in, enroll in courses and forcing force feeding courses on them and telling them, hey, every person who is of this position will have to take this course. I don't think there's a, there should be one single course that every person should take by virtue of them being a particular position. Uh, I call it the Netflix of learning, right? The hyper-personalization of learning. And what we did was, we did what we call uh, a learning influencer in, uh, group, mm -hmm. where we made sure that we follow something sort of like the Starbucks model, where they don't really care who their detractors are. Starbucks doesn't even care if they have the best coffee. Uh, Starbucks doesn't even care if you entered there just because you wanted to hang out and be cool. What is important is that when you enter, you get absolutely ridiculously great customer service. And that's what we tried to do. Anyone who consumed our content, attended our classes, tell, told people about how great it is to learn new skills. We spoiled them no end. We gave them, we gave them points that they could convert into something that they could buy outside. We gave them jackets, we gave them memorabilia. It, it, mean, it means nothing maybe at the surface, but you know how this generation is about immediate gratification, about having certain things be felt right there and then. You don't want to delay, you know, the, the, the reward at the end of the year, which is traditionally the model for HR. You do well, we'll give you a great performance review at the end of the day. They, do, they, they, they care about the here and the now. Yeah. So I did something cool, what do I get for it? Oh, here's a nice uh, piece of here's a, here's a nice piece of device that you can use. It's really it's actually just something as cheap as uh, a logo, an insignia that you can put in your lanyard. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, so what did we what did we learn from this entire thing? That the learning influencers are the one that's driving people towards our content. Yeah. We learn a lot of things from the young ones. Uh, I, I, wish to I wish I could take credit for everything that I'm talking about right now, but all the things that I'm talking about are, are derived from hours and hours of painstakingly listening to those people who are barely heard in corporate boardroom conversations where we rack our brains about what kind of training programs would people want to attend? Why don't we just make sure that, did we try to even listen to them in the first place? 
or are you complaining about the fact that nowadays the youth of today are not so interested about Lean and Six Sigma training no. <laughs> and complaining about why they're not into quality analyst, analysis and the basics of financials. Uh, maybe they will have that appetite, but it's like, a, it's a cycle, right? I mean, first you get them interested in the surface, give them comic books first before they learn to read the novel uh, and not complain that people are not mature enough. I think that's what I've been learning for the past few years that the transition to making the workplace be more responsive to what is happening outside of the workplace, then it becomes a joy. It doesn't become something that's a push. I think the training should catch up on that. And not, not I'm not saying we should do away with all the traditional program. There's, there's the pull and there's the push of training. Mm -hmm. Well, the push training is just BAU, but the pull training is something else. And I think that's what makes people want to go to work every day. If the company that they are joining is amplifying their, their voice. We got a lot of LGBTQ in our group. We have a bunch of people who love dancing. We have a bunch of people who like using the bike. If they go to a job that says, hey, we know what you're into, and we know you're more than just what you do every day. They like what they see, they like what they hear, and that's what I think what we'll do to get top talent. I don't know if that made sense, but that's one of the things that we're trying to do, and we're still figuring it out. I don't think it's going to be a period on everything. Here's how it's, here's the magic formula. Yeah. No, we're still getting the data, it's too early, and it just keeps on evolving as we go.